This is Advanced Tips and Tricks for Using Twitter for Professional Development. I do have a previously released video titled The Beginner's Guide to Using Twitter for Professional Development, and I highly recommend that you start with that video. But in this video tutorial, we're going to take a look at, for those of you that have used Twitter a little bit, you've gotten accustomed to it, what else can you do with it? And I want to focus on some of the third-party tools that are out there and some other opportunities that that you have when using Twitter. The first tool I'd like to show is called TweetDeck. And TweetDeck can be accessed a couple of different ways. You can go just on the internet to tweetdeck.twitter.com and you can sign in that way using your Twitter login and password. Now TweetDeck used to exist in a different incarnation. And so if you used TweetDeck back then, you may even be able to sign up with your original TweetDeck account, but most people will just want to sign into TweetDeck using their Twitter login and password, and this is what you should see. Once you do that, it'll say, welcome to TweetDeck, create a custom Twitter experience, and as you can see here, this is what TweetDeck is really good for. Organize and build collections, keep track of lists, searches, activity, and more. And you can also use it to manage multiple accounts. There's other things you can do as well with it, but I'm just going to X out of this. And you can see that I have signed into my TweetDeck account. And some of the nice things about this is you can see all on one page, I can see my Twitter homepage. So these are people posting, people that I follow are posting, and I see that real time without refreshing anything, without doing anything. I just get updates from my Twitter homepage. So that's really nice. I also get Twitter notifications here in a second column. Some of these notifications are saying that people have favorited my tweets. Uh, some of them are saying that I've been retweeted. And, you know, there's just different notifications that are sent to me. Over here on the right are some messages, direct messages that have been sent to me. So I can look through those and uh, see what they have to say. And then there's other activity as well. Now here in TweetDeck, I can also go over to the left side and add another column. If this isn't enough information for me, I could pull in even more information by clicking Add Column, and I can specify what that column should be. A list of followers, or it could be trending topics, or mentions. And I do want to add mentions, so I'm going to click on that, and then I'll click Add Column. And so now I have a custom column that will show me exactly what I want in TweetDeck. And so TweetDeck is just a wonderful tool for bringing lots of different information about Twitter and from Twitter into one place for you to look at. Now we do have other tools here at the left, and if you want to see exactly what they mean, you can click this button here to expand, and you get the full view there of what you can click on. Notice that there's an accounts button here at the left that you can click, and if you want, you can add another Twitter account. So you can basically manage more than one account right here from TweetDeck, which is nice if you have a professional account and a personal account or something like that. Now, each of these columns is customizable. You can go up to the top of the column in the upper right corner and you can click to determine what kind of content shows up. Do I want to see all tweets or only tweets with videos or only tweets with links? So you get to decide what kind of tweets exactly show up for you. You can put in specific searches. So all tweets on my homepage that have let's say the hashtag ISTE 2015, which is a conference. I could exclude certain phrases or words, and I could include retweets or exclude retweets. Now you can see, because I made that change, the results that are coming up, it's only showing tweets that mention ISTE 2015. So like I say, each of these columns can be customized similarly. And as you can see, this messages column has even more tools in the upper right corner. You can mark all the messages as read, or you can compose a new message right there. TweetDeck also does have tweet scheduling. So I can click here on new tweet in the upper left, and I can compose a tweet, and then I can schedule when that tweet will be published. When will that be sent? And I'll schedule that to be at 6.09 p.m. today and then click tweet at 6.09 p.m. So you can see now I have a scheduled area here. So that was a, just a quick overview of TweetDeck, why you might be interested in it, and a little glimpse into how it works. Let's look at another tool and this is a third-party tool called Hootsuite 
or Hootsuit. I guess you get to decide how to pronounce that. But what this is, in some ways it's similar to TweetDeck, but it allows you to manage more than one account, more than one social media account, really. It doesn't have to be just Twitter. It could be Facebook and Twitter. It could be Google Plus and Twitter. And, uh, you know, there's, there's different options there that you have. Now, there are different plans available. There is the free account, which is what I use. With the free account, you get lots of great features. You can track social success. You can manage more than one social profile. Let's look specifically at the differences. The free features include managing up to three social profiles. So putting your whole social life in one place. Now, a lot of us have more than three social profiles. If that's the case, you're going to need to upgrade to Hootsuite or Hootsuite Pro. There's some basic analytics reports with the free account, basic scheduling so you can schedule when to publish your posts. And as you can see, you are limited to setting just one post at a time to publish. So we do have several great features here in the free version. So I'm going to now close that out and this is my Hootsuite or Hootsuite account. And you can see here in the upper left that I'm connected to my Google Plus account as well as my Twitter account. If I put my mouse there, you can see that there's even more accounts that I have set up. And you can click here in the upper left area where it says add stream to add another stream. It can be from Twitter, it can be from Facebook, Google+, LinkedIn, WordPress, and there's some apps as well. And then from within that stream, look at the different things that you can pull from it. You can also click here to add social networks to connect with Facebook, Twitter, Google, all these other tools. So you can see that this is quite similar to TweetDeck in a lot of ways. You can set up these columns that give you additional information. There's also some reports and things like that that you can access here at the left. So it does have some similarities, but the nice thing here is it pulls not just from Twitter, but from these other social networks as well. And I can post right here where it says compose message. I can click, type, and then I can select where I wanna post it. Do I wanna post it to one of my Twitter accounts? Do I wanna post it to my Facebook account, LinkedIn? Now remember that there are some limitations with the free account, but it's just a wonderful idea here that we have with this website. And Hootsuite or Hootsuite does have an app, an iOS app that you can install, while TweetDeck does not seem to have one at this time. All right, our third advanced tip for Twitter is a tool called Twiriad.com. And what you do with Twiriad is you sign up with Twitter by clicking this account, and it basically grabs information from your Twitter account and it does an analysis of your tweets and your followers' tweets, and you can figure out when is the best time to reach others. Now, what this does is it gets a sampling of, I think, about 100 of your Twitter followers, and then it analyzes your behavior and their behavior, and then it sends you an email. You can see I just got a Twiriad report in my email, and I can click on that, and I had to sign in again using my Twitter account, but now that I have, it gave me an analysis. And you'll notice that it does limit how many times you can pull this report. It looks like about once a month, but I'm gonna click my analysis, and you can see that I get the most exposure when I tweet on weekends between 6 and 7 p.m., 9 and 10 p.m., 11 and 12 a.m., and then on Sundays, different times, Mondays, and weekdays. And then most of my followers are online during these peak hours. And so that's a pretty useful tool if you want to generate more followers and if you want more people to see your tweets, this could be very useful. Okay, for those of you that are teachers out there, I wanted to end by sharing this resource here. This is Education Chats, and this is posted on somebody's Google Sites page, and it's not the easiest URL to type in or to remember, but if you want to find this all you have to do is go to google.com and type in education chats and when you do that it comes up as the first result now what this is it's a list of special chats that are done on Twitter at specified times and most of these are ed chats or education focused chats and a lot of them focus on technology and education but not strictly a lot of them deal with other aspects of teaching in the world today and you can see here at the left side you can click your time zone to get the time shown in that specific time zone. But you can also just browse down the page 
And let's say I'm interested in the Ohio Ed Chat. I can just on the keyboard put Control F or Command F on a Mac, type in Ohio, and you can see it finds the Ohio Ed Chat. And it's going to be at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Monday, May 4th. Now, another way to access this is just go here where it says Official Chat List. And this gives you a complete list of just about every state and some from outside the US. And you can see what the hashtag is for that chat. And then you can see off to the right each of the time zones. And so let's say I want to participate, even though I live in California, let's say, but I want to participate in the Wisconsin Ed Chat. This is the hashtag that I would search for on Twitter. And I would just match this up with my time zone. So in California, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, I would go in and I would copy this hashtag. And then in Twitter, I could just search Twitter for that hashtag. And it's gonna bring up results, tweets, from the people involved in that Wisconsin chat. Now you can do this at any time or day. You can go in and search for Wis chat and you're going to probably get some results but some may be a little outdated a little old but if you sign in to twitter and use the hashtag at the specified time there will be tons of results and you can chat directly with these people get to know people and collaborate with them this is great for within your own state but I would also encourage you to branch out to neighboring states or to other parts of the world and participate in their ed chats as well. So those are just a few advanced Twitter tips and tricks. Hopefully those are useful to you and good luck using those and using Twitter effectively. If you have other suggestions for Twitter tips and tricks, websites that make it more effective or what have you, please post them in the discussion below this YouTube video. Please subscribe to this channel for more video tutorials on technology for teachers and students.